Hi everybody. Uh, today I'm gonna take this uh, video to uh, kind of explain my uh, commutator because there's someone out there asked about it, and I thought I'd like to take a few minutes and try to uh, explain how this thing's actually working. Um, for starters, Mr. Newman has a, his commutator uh, <coughs> reverses polarity, but he pulses it like uh, 10 times per 180 degrees where mine actually pulses it for uh, three times for every 180 degrees. That's what this is. So this is brings it to the one side of my you know, ba battery pack. While on this side, the, the, ta the, the lines are on this side, leading to the other side. So uh, when this comes contact to this side, it's going through one side. When it comes around here, now it's onto this side. So this one contact hat goes from side to side. But Mr. Newman, you know, his his theory says it's got to be pulse. There's got to be a pulse, an instant, an instantaneous change in the current in the coil to create this magnetic field. And he suggests it's got to be pulsed not just once per revolution, but he, you know, the more the better, probably. And he had 20 on his original commutator. I, for now, the one we're trying to kind of be hasty, I only went with three. Because actually someone on uh, Unity.com had also recommended that a good amount of contact was like 30 degrees. And so each of these copper pieces, if I back up here, actually represent like 30 degrees of uh, my, my arc or my circle. Now these little pieces of tape here, or copper tape, this is where I actually short out the coil. By doing that, it causes the uh, field, the magnetic field, to collapse in on itself, thus giving me the extra kickback. That that collapse is what creates the uh, back spike. <coughs> and so it is uh, technically kind of important to actually have the short out. That's what all this this red wire is for, is to short out the wire. So when it when it touches right here it's touching on this side too you know, it goes through the red wire there and shorts out the coil and causes the coil to collapse that is where you get your huge back spike now the fact that I'm only using uh, 26 gauge wire right now that kinda goes against what Mr. Newman says so I do believe that my current setup with uh, just using this 26 gauge wire is not going to be producing any kind of uh, over unity at this moment. Um, but what I am actually trying to get at is I want a super efficient motor uh, for later projects here and for uh, other later videos that I'll get to. Um, as you can see right now, I've got it hooked up with all these batteries. There's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 batteries. Supposedly, they're not all at 9 volts because they are used. And so, Mr. Newman also suggests, you know, less current, more voltage, which is why I got, you know, 29 volt batteries on, which is technically around 180, but I'm probably only going to be around, like, say, 170, 160. I'll take a, I'm going to take a reading here in a minute, but I mostly wanted to explain my commutator in this uh, video so people can understand that, yes, I have three pulses, and I'll do it over here, three pulses. Then I, then I reverse the polarity, three more pulses for a full 180 degrees. And yes, this little red wire is to short out the coil and cause the magnetic field to collapse. Thus giving me a back surge of current, or back spike. And uh, last night, this worked beautifully. I don't know about over unity because I don't have like a, uh, an, an amp meter yet. I'm working on that. They're not, not all that expensive, but my funds are now down to where I need to not be spending any money. So, um, I'm going to hold it here because it's about uh, almost a five minute video. And in my next video, I'll do a full ten minute run of this thing to show you how well it's working. But I could probably run it for a few minutes right now. Oh, I suppose. I twist my arm. I want to see it run too today, so. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn it on. Let's get it set up to where I like to have it, which is just on starting my contact right there and just, just starting on it. And then when I throw a switch, it'll get, 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 
taking it in the gear. I'll run this for like another five minutes. That's how long I got left for my video. And we got my phone here to show me how much time I got left. So, and look at it go. I'll take a voltage reading later. This was just to show you that it's set up. My problem has been solved. The last time I tried running it like this, it would run for 30 seconds, slow down, and then eventually stop. So this here is to show that by including this uh, short out circuit, which I think is what I what I needed. It's actually discharging the uh, the coil properly, creating a back spike, and discharging any kind of resistance that might be in induced resistance. Look at it go, nice and steady. This is a I, I am extremely excited about this, and I can apply a little bit of force here. I'm not pushing a lot, but enough. Just trying to see. We, I can push a little bit, and it keeps going. Try a little bit more. I got I got a, a decent amount of torque here. Now, if I ramp this up and go, you know, more bigger coil, bigger wire, get down to like 20 gauge or so, still not exactly a Newman setup. But he, he wants the 5 gauge stuff. Then you need like miles, miles, miles of that stuff. Okay. About another three and a half minutes, I'll let it run, and then I'll get this video posted so you guys can see it. No, no measurements this time. Just want to show it, show it running. That it goes for more than 30 seconds. <laughs> Yay! I am extremely excited about that. Yeah, you can actually see the uh, arcing going on over there on over here on this uh, contact. Maybe even a little bit. Yep, yep, even a little bit right in there. I believe I'm getting pretty much close to unity on this. Now I had this breadboard here for later for later experiments. In case I want to throw that uh, neon bulb in there or something. Right now I'm not ready to do that. I'm getting close. I mean I'm very, very close. So I'll probably do that here pretty quick. Okay, about another minute and 45 seconds. And we'll call it good for the moment and I'll get this uploaded so you guys can see it. I have a two, as true as I can, you know, with the exception of the gauge of the wire, the Newman machine here. Running, maintaining, speed. It might slow down just a little bit. I can hear a little slow down, but it's still pretty decent here at the moment. Uh, I'll probably get a tachometer for this uh, in the near future, too. And I'm guessing about, I have no idea, but it looks like around 2,000 RPMs, if not more. That is a good clip. Okay, less than a minute, about 45 seconds left. And if I add any more batteries to this, the faster it'll go. Stronger the magnetic field in that coil. So I won't be getting any over unity, but I can get this thing spinning pretty good. I think this is right where I want it actually right now. 2,000. If, I, if I'm getting 2,000 RPMs, that's about what I'm looking for. Okay, 15 seconds left. 10. 5 seconds. 
two, one, talk to you later.